This is Tony Hendrick with Painting Spirit, and today I'm going to talk about empty. I had an empty canvas there, and now I'm filling it. So, I've been talking about a subject I brought up a few days ago. I think I'll continue that, and that subject was through me, which just was talking about this state of being that an artist can get into where it feels like the art is coming through the artist as opposed to being created by the artist. And many artists have talked about that state of being. So it's a <clears throat> it's a good subject to continue to talk about and the reason I chose empty today is because it's all about being an empty vessel isn't it everybody's heard that expression empty vessel and that'll get you into a state of allowing something to come through you. If you're all filled up with gobbledy gook, there's no way for something to come through you. At least that's the kind of way that I thought about it at one time. Maybe I'll share a, a, a story again. So... This would have been a few years that I went out on my own, started my own business as a sole proprietor artist, left the billboard painting industry to basically I was in the mode of painting murals back then. Really wanted to do my studio work. I just didn't see how I could and feed my family at the same time. So mural painting was something that allowed me to have Somewhat of a substantial income to and you know it's kind of a security too because mural projects tended to be larger long take longer to do so there's more of a consistency to the work especially if you're on a project that's over a year long, which is one of the projects I had about three years into me being self-employed. And that was a mural down in Kalamazoo. That's a town about an hour away from where I live, where I lived at the time too. Um, and that mural project was inside the Kalamazoo Air Zoo Museum. Working with another artist, Rick Herter. And this mural was a very big mural. I ended up being in the Guinness Book of World Records for largest indoor mural so it was, a, it was a significant project for me I had been kind of in the mode of making things work for myself and having a project like this where it was over a year long was just a really nice project to have um,
But it involved a lot of work, too. Let's see, what do I want to do with this guy? If you haven't figured out, I decided to do another landscape. I think I'll do some sort of a purplish thing happening here. This idea of empty kind of inspired me to grab this photo. Actually, it's funny because I just dropped my, a couple of days ago, I dropped my um, storage, what are they called, the hard drive, external hard drive, which had a all my photos on this particular computer that I'm using. And I can't get to my photos on it, so I created a whole new photos folder just for one photo. I think it's kind of funny I picked the subject of empty. So, what is empty? started talking about this project in Kalamazoo. At that time I was building a, a house, working on the world's largest indoor mural. A lot of intense intensity going on at that time for myself. And I didn't really realize it, but I was quite stressed. I probably did realize it. What am I saying? I probably did re re realize it. Just maybe wouldn't want to let anybody else know. So building my own house, working on the world's largest indoor mural, traveling an hour each day, commuting an hour each day, and I ended up in a traffic jam halfway home from Kalamazoo, and I decided to get off the expressway. Instead of sitting in the traffic jam. So I took the back roads home, and that led me to Baker's Wildlife Sanctuary, where I decided to take a hike. And that was one of those moments for me where I was just, uh, I ended up creating a painting called Soul Refuge from it. It's a painting of a cherry tree in the middle of this wildlife sanctuary and that experience for me was you know I was in the middle of this kind of stressful life for myself and being in that sanctuary and looking back on it was just simply that I no longer was in my head trying to think and anticipate all this stuff about building the house, doing whatever I was doing with this mural, working with another artist and all that kind of stuff. And being in that wildlife sanctuary just gave me a sense of emptiness, really. It's allowed to empty my thoughts. And I ended up filling them pretty quickly with, oh, this is what I want to do with my career. I want to go to all these different wildlife sanctuaries and create paintings and, and didn't end up going quite that way. But what I had I actually did is I put a bunch of stress on myself by setting that goal. And right around this time, I also was getting into 
listening to different spiritual teachers. And the one that I had hooked up with at that time was Dr. Michael Rice. He was teaching Aramaic forgiveness. And I really took to that work. And that was all about, to me, letting go. I mean, there's, it doesn't really matter to me whether it's getting into that space of the no mind of the Buddha or if it's Aramaic forgiveness of Jesus. All of it to me is getting to that state of emptiness where I'm allowing allowing life to come through me. At that time, because of the way my beliefs were, conditioned beliefs that I had, I actually took that, that work and made it about the Aramaic forgiveness. I took that and made it about I gotta I gotta get rid of all this stuff. <laughs> Good luck, Tony. Good luck. Well, that's what I've found since then is there's nothing to get rid of. The emptiness is not about getting rid of something that's wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. It's really about... What is it about? It's about the ownership of what's inside of you and being at peace with it, really. What's inside of me. Let's see, I'm going to kind of get into this painting here a little bit. I think we're getting close to that 15 minute mark and I want to pick this, this painting because it kind of feels empty to me. Let's see if I can find the fullness and the emptiness. That's really what I've come to find you know another way of talking about emptiness is letting go and I was contemplating that this morning I actually looked up the definition of letting go and the first thing it says is to not prevent or to not forbid, forbid or something to that effect not prevent or not pre forbid and I thought that was interesting I don't really have a clear way of defining letting go, but I used to think it's something passive, but if you look at the words, go is very active. Letting is kind of an active process, but there is this aspect of just allowing what is to be. I really feel like that's where I've come to realize this emptiness is all about is just letting what is to be what is. And there's a huge amount of freedom in that. Hmm, let's see. Let's see, do I need to add more colors to this? This is a little bit of an experiment for me today. This painting. Not sure what I'm doing with this painting. I kind of like it though. You know, letting go of the 
the way that I need to do a particular painting opens me up to something new this feels a little bit new to me something kind of different than I tried today not sure if it worked or not but it's fun exploration so this weekend see what you can empty out inside <laughs> Even though there's nothing to empty out. Find that fullness within. Get out your own brushes. Play around. Have fun. And we'll see you next month.